Whoa, crap. Well, okay then. Job well done. Mill time. Quality. Oh crap! <laughs> I tetherballed myself into the ground. <laughs> oh, there we go! See, even your failures are fun in this game. What's up, folks, and welcome to Indie Ramble, and welcome to the second of two games I'm covering from single-person developer Radiant Games. If you haven't seen the video on De um, Devastator yet, I highly recommend checking that out. Really good uh, twin-stick score attack game, but uh, this is something very, very different. So this is Instruments of Destruction. And yeah, Radiant Games has been around for a while now. Um, Luke Schneider, who's the single developer behind that, puts out some really cool stuff. And he has a really good pedigree. He's worked on games before, like Red Faction Guerrilla. And while the second you take a look at this thing, you're going to know why that's very important to this. So this at its basis form is a game about wrecking stuff in stylish ways. There's no story to it whatsoever, nor does there have to be. This is also one of those games that I feel is doing early access right. I don't like to cover a lot of early access games on this channel unless they're one of those. Uh, he is doing constant updates, making big improvements all the time, and he is very heavily involved with his community, getting a lot of feedback and ideas. So this is the, con the content of the single player mode that's in here so far. So you have all these different islands, which are gonna have different objectives in them, and they all have multiple different modes, which have star ratings that are based on how quickly you can get them done. And uh, there is a full sandbox mode in this, but we're, oh, we're gonna talk about that later. So you just pick one of these and go. There's no load times in this game, which I absolutely love. Uh, you have a primary objective, a bonus objective, and a, what's called the build requirement, which is a budget that you're allowed to spend on building your vehicles. And yes, this is why. Okay, ignore this monstrosity for now. We'll talk about that later. But this game has a full-featured, very advanced vehicle editor. You can see here, there's a ton of controls. You have an immense amount of stuff you can do. You can even, you're, I'm partially obscuring it here, but you can even remap all the button inputs depending on the, the design of your vehicle uh, to change how people interact with it. There's a ton of different parts available. And this game has full Steam Workshop support and it's one of the slickest implementations I've ever seen. There, you can search vehicles by the types that you're looking for. You can look at featured vehicles, which are ones that I assume the developer has chosen personally. You can make your own stuff and upload it, and when you want something, you literally just click on it, and it's downloaded and implemented into your game in a matter of seconds. Again, we're gonna talk about this more later, but this is slick as hell. And then, um, if you wanna get a better understanding of how to start things, or uh, just wanna sort of go through the levels and not spend a lot of time building, there's what's called the showcase vehicles. These are pre-built ones made by the developer and you can pick whatever one you want as long as it is within your budget because uh, the levels have different budgetary requirements to prevent you from, you know, just, just breaking the thing entirely, right? Um, but there are endless possibilities of what you can make in this. For, you know, everything from relatively straightforward things to things that are just completely out to lunch. So let's go with this one, for example. So this is the dump chopper. It has this really slick animation for when you change vehicles to take one out and then put other ones in. And I really love the look of this thing. I like the look of this game in general. This is rocking its own engine, which I think it would have to. I don't think off the self en shelf engines could handle the friggin' physics nightmares that happen in this. I do like the look of it, but I will tell you right now that even if you're on a high-end computer like me, if you, some of the bigger vehicles and levels in this will absolutely crater your frame rate. I'm sure more optimizations are coming, but with what this game enables you to do, it's just not possible to, to keep a game like this above 60 at all times. Like that is totally understandable. So I've taken this simple vehicle here. This is just the first level. So your goal is just to get up to the, um, well, 
to get up to the tower and wreck it. And obviously I've kind of screwed this up already because this vehicle doesn't have very big wheels on it. So it's kind of hard to drive around in this level. So you can go back to the design stage at any point you want and uh, we'll just pick something different, I suppose. So um, I don't know, what about this guy? Let's do that. You hit the button and off you go. How quickly this title does everything is what I really love. Again, there's basically no loading and everything is just so snappy. There's no time wasted whatsoever. And I think that's brilliant. I, I really am impressed with the tech I've seen in this so far. So you get yourself up here and you go, so you go around. I believe that the developer said that this game is gonna have controller support when it comes out but that would be really tough. You definitely want to keyboard and mouse this. If he ever has plans to put this on console, it's gonna require some black magic for sure. So there's an exploding barrel there, as you can see. So we go there and there you go. So that's the first one. And tell me, it, you, you just don't have a soul if you can't have a great smile across your face when you're doing this. The destruction in this is just absolutely delightful. And the thing I like about this, so there is an experience system in this. I don't think it adds up to much right now, but as you can see, it gives you little bits of experience for doing everything. And what I really love about this is that even in failure, it gives you the experience. So it encourages you to not just min-max everything and try to play things safe and pick the most, you know, the, the most efficient route possible at all times. It's just like, no, we're gonna, you know, even if you fail, you'll get some experience out of it and it encourages you to try and experiment without just being in everybody gets a trophy mode. I think that's really, really smart. Like, I just love like how the terrain deforms when your vehicle drops, you know, all these, it's just all these nice little touches that really make this super cool. So in this level, your secondary objective is to collect gems and you'll see those scattered throughout. There's, there's various different uh, types of secondary objectives, uh, including not destroying certain things. But, and there's just so many ways to play this. And that's what I love is this is a game just about having big dumb fun. That's what I call it. Too many games these days, even ones that consider themselves somewhat mechanics focused, are just, they're trying to shoehorn in stories or too many objectives or they're, they're trying, oh dear, well, rip me. <laughs> they're, they're trying to systemize everything too much to try to, because it's felt like if you don't have a really solid, obvious path to progression, the people are going to get turned off. And I'm an old school gamer. I remember games from back in the day that were literally just about doing dumb things for and just ha making your own fun out of it. One of my favorite games growing up was a game on uh, DOS computers, and it was on other things as well, I believe. It was called Stunts. And there's an open source sort of reimagining of it out there, but it's a game that's never gotten a proper modernization, and I've always been surprised by that. And it was a racing game, and it had a traditional campaign in it, but it, 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 what you could do is it had a very full-featured track editor and you could design tracks that were either quite sensible or completely off the charts insane. And then you could race those with it. And my buddies and I spent, I don't know how many hours playing that and just designing the most ridiculous tracks we could and seeing if we could pull them off. And even when, when we made tracks that were impossible, we would fail so hilariously that we would just have a great time with it. Really wish we could get a new stunts, man. But this scratches that same itch because it's just about designing crazy things and then blowing them up and even if you don't you still have a great time doing it and and i've always said that i'm a mechanics first gamer i love games that tell good stories but if your game doesn't have good gameplay then there you've already screwed up and you might as well just write a book if if you can't have good gameplay to go along with your story this game has, doesn't care about its story. This game's just like do stuff, and I absolutely love that. Um, this is this is a, a fantastic uh, option for that, and it just gives you the tools to do really ridiculous things. And if you if you're someone who doesn't have the time to make crazy vehicles, which is kind of me to be honest, and you just want to pick something cool, go and watch stuff blow up, you can do that too. You can play this in its most simplistic form or at its most advanced form and still really feel like you've got your money's worth out of it. 
So right now there's vehicle editors. There is also a building editor that is a bit, uh, it's, in, it's early right now, uh, a layout editor, and there is a ground editor coming soon. As you can see, these editors are nuts. This is basically like a level design tool almost from something like Unity or Unreal. So the people who are willing to put the time into this are gonna create amazing things, I think. As this title evolves through early access, I think you're just gonna continue to see absolutely nuts content getting created. And that's what I love about it. So of course, this is the real meat of it that I think a lot of people are gonna really be into. Yes, this is the sandbox mode. This is where you pick one of the islands from the base game and you have no limits. You have no objectives, you have no budgetary limitations, it's just go. And this is where this game really shines incredibly. So you can go into the Steam Workshop and you can pick some of these absolutely bonkadoo vehicles and just have fun with them. And I absolutely love this. For example, here's one that I tried yesterday based on the Dune Sandworm, because why not? The sheer number of moving parts in this thing are ridiculous and the engine makes it work. It's that's what's so impressive about it. Now, when you play with some of these big vehicles, this is where you're going to see performance go into the absolute toilet. As you can see, we've already dropped below 60 frames a second and I've barely done anything yet. I've had this game into the teens sometimes with some of the crazy things in this. Oh, there it goes. Oh, feel that chug. But you really don't care because I mean, look at it. <laughs> This is utterly impractical and ridiculous, but who cares? It's just so much freaking fun. Oh my God. I just, again, you cannot not have a massive smile on your face when you're playing this game. There's so, I, there's just, there's something wrong with you if you don't, if, if you don't. This is one of those games where you could come home from having a really bad day and just play this, blow up a ton of crap, and make yourself feel better. I mean, <laughs> how, how insane. Yeah, I, right? And then you can just choose, okay, well, that was fun. So, uh, you know, what else we got now? And I got experience for that, by the way, because of course I did, you know. Um, you've got just all of these crazy things. Ah, hammer time. I remember this one. I did this when I first streamed this game. I just love this animation too. I think this is so cool. Like, Radiant Games always, the engine that he uses for his games are always kind of low poly, and yet they use some amazing effects that just look, like his games always look gorgeous, even though the engine is a little bit simplistic in nature, uh, in terms of uh, visuals, that is. So yeah, you got this. Oh yeah, look, it's a hammer with rockets on it because screw you, <laughs> I got a hammer with rockets on it. <laughs> oh, this is just a delight. I think you could at, honestly just buy this, never touch the main campaign, just go into sandbox mode and screw around with Steam Workshop stuff and have all the fun you could ever want out of it. It's just, it's just so goofy and dumb in the best possible way. Um, I think... <laughs> you can't not, you just can't not smile. Oh, I love it. I really think Radiant Games has struck gold with this uh, in terms of just the, uh, how, how, like, the systems that he have put he has put together to make a game that is incredibly easy to get into. I could drop this in front of anybody and say push buttons and watch what happens. Um, and but also appealing to really hardcore players who want to do. Okay, I spawned in in kind of a bad spot here. I'm kind of stuck. But but also creating a title that hardcore players and people who are big into creation could spend hours and hours on. He struck that balance with absolute perfection. And I think this is really, really cool. And we just, we don't get games like this anymore. And it's such a damn shame. And it's so good to see 
somebody like Radiant Games really carrying the torch for this, um, for this type of thing. Um, I think that's something we need a lot more of. Um, and there is a level of programming talent and chops here that, um, you know, he, he, I think he stands alone in some of his programming and engine prowess. This is definitely not something you could see every dev do. Pointy McStaberson. I mean, why not? This looks like something out of a horror film. Um, but let's do this. So, and you see the control, and yeah, the control layout changes for the vehicle depending on how it's set up. People can can customize that to an a, to an insane degree. So if you you have something that just has too many implements, well, it's fine. You just tie your controls to it in such a way, and yeah, it might make it a little tricky to learn initially, but it allows you the level of granular control that you would want out of these things. Hello. There we go. Like just, oh, I love it. I I I I could sit here and just keep showing you guys this endlessly but i mean you really get the point here this is why this this is a delight and uh if you like just big dumb fun and you just want something to either distract yourself with or to have some fun creating in and and want something that doesn't require the level of brain power that ne investment that necessarily another big game is and is just all killer no filler that's absolutely what Instruments of Destruction is, and uh, I can't recommend it enough. This dev is doing early access about as right as anybody can be. The amount of engagement uh, with his community that he's already shown with how often he's updating this, he's clearly digging into this big time, and that's fantastic. Uh, I think it's well worth it even in its current price, even in its current amount of content, I think it's well worth the asking price. And I can't wait to see this evolve. I will definitely be checking it out as it goes through early access. And whatever 1.0 is going to be, it is going to be something absolutely very special. So, yeah, that is Instruments of Destruction. Like I said, if you if you can't find something to smile at in this game, I think you need help. Because this is just so much stupid fun. And it's the kind of thing that you you couldn't have you couldn't have done on this level uh, even a few years ago, but modern technology makes it possible. And you know, what a better way to use technology than to just wreck things indiscriminately? I can't think of one. So, thank you very much for watching, everybody. I do appreciate it. If you like what you saw here, please do all the normal YouTube things: like, subscribe, hit the bell so you get notifications on future videos. Drop a comment down below. Tell me, what do you think about this? Are there other sort of destruction-heavy games like this that are out that you can recommend? Do you remember stunts from back in the day? And if you do, do you know anything other than that open stunts, open source version of it that kind of scratches that itch? I know Trackmania kind of does, but not really. It's kind of a different beast, and uh, I'd really love to see something like that. And as always, you can follow me over at twitch.tv slash pxabstraction for multiple variety streams a week, including... Um, games, uh, we cover a lot of Indian retro titles over there, including a lot of things that you won't necessarily see over here on this channel. We have a fantastic community over there, and I would love to see you be a part of it. Thank you very much for watching, everybody, and I will see you on the next Indie Ramble. You folks have yourselves a good one. Take her easy.